All right, so let's look at the difference in rolling motion, rotation motion only, and translational motion, and then what happens when we put it all together, okay? Um, so first of all, what would rotation look like only? So rotation only, that would be a case where you have a circle or a disc or a sphere or any anything. It could be a rod, but it's fixed here in the center or it's on some sort of axle and it rotates and has an angular speed. But it's not moving across the table. So this is like a disc on a pulley. And as the string passes over it, the pulley turns. But you don't see the pulley move from one place to another. So you just see the pulley go round and round and round. The disc just spin around in, in, in place. And so every point on the edge of this guy has a tangential velocity that's r omega. So I'm going to draw v tangential is equal to r omega for all of the points on the edge here. So v tangent equals r omega. This v tangent right here then is also equal to r omega. So I got a little sloppy there, sorry. Then there's translation only. And for a block, that might be really easy to imagine. So up until we started rotating things, you had a block and it was moving to the right. And it had a velocity v, which was the same as the velocity v of this point here, which was the same as the velocity v of this point here, or this point here. Like they all had the same velocity. So there's no difference in how we draw our velocity vectors on a sphere or a circle that is translating only. So this is that bowling ball that is sliding along the floor and it's not rolling yet. It's just skidding across the super slick surface. Okay, so this would be the velocity of the center of mass, Vcm. And if it's only moving to the right, then the velocity of the center of mass is the same velocity at any other point. The top part does not get ahead. It's not rotating. They're all moving together across the, the floor. Now, if it is rolling and translating at the same time, imagine <coughs> taking this disc with its translational mo motion and taking this disc with its translational motion and superimposing it, putting it on top of the rotation motion. So we're going to basically add these two motions together. So for rotation without slipping that means that at the bottom where the object comes in contact with the surface this point right here has to have a velocity of zero. It has to be momentarily stuck to the surface. Next time we'll be a hula hoop. So, if that is true, when we superimpose, there was a tangential velocity here, Vt, which is equal to r omega. And there was a V center of mass and there was a V center of mass and there was a V <coughs> center of mass and up at the top there was also a I'm gonna, I, I want to draw it so you can see both of them so I just drew it a little bit above it there was also a V translation which is equal to R times omega 
Now, in order for the hoop to grip the ground right here and not slip, so have zero relative motion, a zero relative velocity, what has to be true about the translational velocity and the velocity of the center of mass? So VT has to equal V center of mass, which means the velocity of the center of mass is equal to what? R omega. So this is equal to R times omega. So what is the net or total velocity of the top piece? If I were to put them together. Yes. So with their powers combined, they are 2R omega. And, they're, and it's 2R away from the place where it touches the rotation pivot. Like that's kind of where it's pivoting about. Think about the motion. Very exciting. So when we saw that um, LED and it was like point and it stopped here and a point and it stopped here. So everywhere it stopped, there was like this little point right there and it was moving. So there was no velocity. It was instantaneously at rest or having a zero velocity path. I don't even know what that word is, but path is for the bottom there. Okay. So, when would we have slipping? What would the case have to be? Then the velocity of the center of mass does not equal the tangential velocity. So maybe it's faster. If the center of mass is faster than the rotational r omega, then it's like that bowling ball that's moving and slowly rotating. And then it begins to rotate and translate with no slipping. Um, what if the center of mass is less? It's, it's spinning more than it's translating. So that's kind of the idea. So if the center of mass velocity is greater than r omega, then it is going to translate more than it spins. If V center of mass is less, I mean greater than R omega, no, less than R omega, then it is going to spin more than it translates. Okay. Now, with that said, let's look at this question from 2012 um, because it's, n it's not as scary as it seems maybe to begin with. So you've got this hoop, and it is sliding only. So what can you tell me about the velocity at the top, middle, and bottom? So it would all be v naught. Then we hit this rough patch where it goes from sliding, but there has to be a transition. You can't just instantaneously start rolling. So there is some, what, what acts on the system then if we get this rough patch? Friction, very good. So we get some friction, and it starts rolling and rolling. So then, and there's some crazy stuff happening there. So it's rolling and it's sliding, and then we get to the end of this rough patch, piece L, where it's just rotating and translating. So nice, smooth motion. No slipping. It's gripping because the, see the squiggle line for the rough patch up there? Okay. So the ring has a mass m, the radius is capital R, the rotational inertia is capital M R squared. That's for a ring or a hoop given. Is initially sliding on a frictionless surface at a constant velocity v naught to the right as shown above. At t equals zero, it encounters a surface with a coefficient of friction of mu and begins sliding and rotating. After traveling a distance l, the ring begins to roll without slipping. Express all the answers to the following in terms of m, R, V naught, mu, and the fundamental constants as appropriate. So it's going to be a alphabet soup answer. A says starting with Newton's second law. Hopefully you know what that means. What does that mean? 
Yes, a net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. Or in either translation form, which is m times a, or rotational form, what is the pi alpha? Very good. So we want to derive a differential equation that can be used to solve for the magnitude of the following as the ring is sliding and rotating. So this middle bit, the linear velocity v and the angular velocity omega. So you're told to start with Newton's second law. So if that is the sum of the forces or the sum of the torque, what do you have to do before you can do summing forces and summing torque? You've got to draw the free body diagram. Very good. So we have our ring that's rolling, and it's on the rough patch. So what are the forces acting on this ring? Gravitational force, and it is located at the center. So even though there's not a mass at the center of a ring, you can have the force start there because that's where the gravitational force would be concentrated. What else? Which, which way do you think the friction force is directed? Left. That is correct. Because it's rotating and rolling clockwise, you've got to have something to cause it to turn. Anything else acting on it? A normal force from the floor onto the object. And the normal force should be equal in magnitude to the gravitational force because it's not accelerating up or down. So if you're trying to draw them so that they look equal size. Then this thing has a radius. Capital R. So first part was to use Newton's first law, nope, Newton's second law, to derive these equations. So let's do that. Let's sum the forces in the x direction. Are the forces in the x direction balanced? No, so it equals ma. What do we have? A negative friction force is equal to ma. What about the y direction? They're balanced. So then the normal force minus the gravitational force is zero. Now, what about the rotation? Are, are all the forces acting at the center of mass? Nope. Do we have forces that are acting perpendicular to the center of mass and causing the object to roll around? Yes. So there is a net torque on the system. Which force is causing that torque? The friction force causes the rolling. All right, so I have drawn my free body diagram and I have summed my forces. And the first part asks for a differential equation that will allow me to solve for velocity. So where is velocity buried in any of this stuff up here? And the acceleration, oh, so acceleration is what? Almost. And, or dv by dt, right? So could I take this equation here and write negative mu times mg? Because isn't the normal force equal to the weight in this case? And that's equal to m, and instead of a, write dv dt? The mass cancels out, and what are we left with? Negative mu g equals dv dt. Is that a differential equation? It is. Was that scary? Okay, the next part said to find the angular speed, and oh my goodness, uh, that was the force of friction, uh, pretend like that's an F, there we go, times R, and it would be a capital R because it was a capital R, is equal to I, alpha, and I was capital M, capital R squared, and then this would be alpha. But we want to find omega, and how is alpha related to omega? Yes, so alpha would be D omega by DT. 
And so this would be mu mg for the force of friction times r is equal to, oh, these are the same m's. I made them look different, sorry. r squared, and that would be d omega dt. The mass that has the friction on it is the mass that is the hoop, so those are the same. And you've got an r here and an r there, r everywhere. So mu g over r is equal to d omega dt. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy. So now part b asks us to derive an expression for the magnitude of the following um, as the ring is sliding and rotating. So this is still during that patch L. Okay. Uh, the linear velocity v as a function of time and the angular velocity omega as a function of time. So let's go back over here. And didn't we have a function for All right, so for part B, we're supposed to find V velocity as a function of time. And didn't we get that basically dV dt was equal to negative mu g in the first part? So can I separate this by dV is equal to negative mu g dt, like that? And then can I take the integral of both sides? So, what do we want to evaluate? Where do we want our limits to be? The initial velocity to some final velocity? And then uh, the initial time, 0 to t? So then what's the integral of dv? Evaluated from v0 to v? V minus V naught, right, is equal to, and then we're going to go from 0 to T. So this would be negative mu G T minus 0. So then what does V equal? Negative mu, yeah, does that look like V equals V naught plus A T? Oh, Molly. Yay. So, then for part two, we're to find the angular speed. So, d omega dt, that's a d, and then that's a t, is equal to um, mu g over capital R. Do the same thing. d omega is equal to mu g over R dt, uh, integrate, and integrate from what? Uh, yeah, what would be the initial angular speed for that? Well, yeah, we can just do omega naught to omega, and then from 0 to t. I think omega naught for that rough spot is zero because it wasn't rotating and then it starts rotating. So I think that's going to be zero in a minute. But that would be omega minus omega naught is equal to what? Mu g t over r. So then omega is equal to mu g t over r plus omega naught. That's it. That's not hard. You can do this. You are smart. So we want to derive an expression for the time it takes to travel L. What's changing about the motion from the beginning of L to the end of L? It's not moving forward. Well, it was moving forward only, and now it's moving forward and spinning, and then at the end it's just moving and rotating. So what? What's there? There's a condition. What's the velocity of, so what's the, like this has a velocity V naught on it. What is the velocity here going to be equal to? Well, 
it'll be r omega. Remember when it's not slipping, the velocity of the center of mass is equal to r omega. That is really important. So the time, so for part C, so V center of mass is equal to R omega um, at, at L. The V of center of mass is equal to V naught at zero position, at the initial position of the, the beginning of the rough spot. That's what I'm trying to say. So what is causing this change? All right, and so we have to slow it down, right? We have to go from B naught to R <coughs> omega. So what are you going to do? You want to use this equation right here? And so the final velocity needs to be what to satisfy this condition? R omega? r omega equals, and then the initial velocity was v naught minus mu g t, okay? And then um, what about omega? Because I don't, I can't put omega in my final answer. Substitute? What's omega naught? That was zero because it wasn't rotating at the beginning of the length. So we've got this guy we can stick in here. So what do we have? We'll have R times mu g t, I guess I can make that a capital R, times capital R is equal to V naught minus mu g t. You don't look happy. So what happens? Boop. So 2 mu g t is equal to v naught. So t would equal what? v naught over 2 mu g. So we want to derive an expression for the magnitude of the velocity of the ring immediately after it has traveled the distance l. So, what do you think? Oops, let's go to the right page. All right, so if we want to find the velocity, and we have a velocity equation, and we have a time function, let's just use it. So V is equal to V naught minus mu g t. So V naught minus mu g times V naught over 2 mu g. So that would be what? V naught minus V naught over 2, which would be V naught over 2. Did it slow down? Yes, and that's what it takes to cause it to rotate. So some of the translational energy has to be converted to rotational energy in that transition between translating and rotating, slipping, translating, and rotating without slipping and translating. So there has to be some change there and we slow down and that that so that answer makes sense so I don't feel weird about it. If it if I had gotten V naught, meaning the velocity didn't change, I would be sad. Okay. What's up? Derive an expression for L. What do we have? So did we have V of T was equal to V naught minus mu G T? And we know that the velocity at the end is V naught over 2. We know the initial velocity is V naught. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? Okay. So, so then if we derive this... What do we get? 
or take the take the integral of isn't um, x of t equal to the integral of v dt? So I was trying to write and didn't quite come out that way. All right. So then, what would x of t be? V naught t minus one half mu g t squared. Does that look familiar? Okay. All right. Now, x at a particular t would be equal to, and we're evaluating it from like zero to our final t. So let's put in our final t. So uh, v naught. Oh, what was t? Was something crazy? V naught over two mu g minus one half mu g v naught over two mu g squared. Is that right? So we're gonna have v naught squared over two mu g minus one half v naught squared over. 4 mu g. So after substituting our time in, is that what we get for L? That looks so nice. 